E Shalom, I am Shalom, call hello, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakaha Kodash, I'm gonna send double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to your Akim out there pushing the word in sincerity and truth. This is the brother Ariala. On this lesson, um, it's definitely uh, one of those lessons that, um, you know, <laughs> like Yashua Wamba says, it's like, like it's like we were afraid to talk about it because it doesn't it, you, it, in this current state of life it, it generates a lot of strife but it is something that brothers deal with a lot and um even the uh, um you sisters that are tuning in um that are serious about you know conforming to the word of the lord you know what i want to talk about today is something as far as mindset overall mindset and tracking towards the kingdom now the reason why i have our page pulled up First off, I just want to tell everybody, hey, you know, we got uh, 944 subscribers on this page. Um, if we can get this page up to 1,000 subscribers, it just makes it a little easy for us to do live sessions, like as far as the in transits and stuff like that. It just makes it a lot easier for us to do that. So getting up to those level of subscribers just makes it easier for us to put stuff out there. When you look at um, Great Millstone Dallas, really all the brothers pages but i'm just going to use our camp for an example when you go over the topics that are presented here i mean we talk about everything you know we really go into a lot of different things and we talk about you know right now you know the spirit is heavy on the market of beast the spirit is heavy on you know as far as prophecy going with um you know second Ezra 15 16 some of the things that's going on in the world right now but also the the, the, the class sessions and, and you know the mindset lessons and spiritual topics you know we, we go into the story of the flood uh, 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 the blessings uh, of the kingdom um you know just just you know there's a, there's a sabbath uh, lesson everything like that today what i want to do i, I do want to talk about uh, mindset as far as women and dealing with marriage and dealing with what what if you are connected to a man or not even and maybe not even if you're not married so to speak, and you're just kind of watching. I want to touch in on some mindset things. We touched on this at camp, actually, last Friday, but that live stream literally got cut off in the midst of us preaching once we started to kind of go into the prophecies. So I wanted to come back and touch on this very quickly. I don't know what I'm gonna name this yet, but the mindset behind it is um, for the women to, you, just as the men has to focus on our duty and what we're supposed to be doing as far as the ministry and preaching and you know doing whatever we need to do to make it to the kingdom the women have to learn to focus on that as well i think because of western culture a lot of our women have learned the mindset of control and they feel like um a man is supposed to be at the centerpiece of like their personal attention and that's it for a man that's progressing and growing, that's not gonna happen. Yeah, so I just really wanna talk about uh, a little bit of mindset for the men and women, but you know, this is gonna talk about the women, but hopefully this helps the men now because a lot of times it's hard for us to speak to these things because we feel like we're gonna hurt the woman's feelings. We feel like we, we, we have to kind of cater to the, a woman's emotions with in, in concern of, you know, feeling like they're not getting the time that they want, the attention that they want, you know, and everything like that. And so I want to talk about, you know, what are some of the things that the women should be more focused on in order to continue to progress and grow, you know, if they want to really, you know, latch on, especially to a man of the Lord in this thing, a person, a man that's his first duty is the ministry and then everything else that's going on. What should the women be focusing on doing? Now, the first scripture, that I want to read is one that um, we brought out that I feel like is a heavy, heavy scripture in the book of Sirach, the 25th chapter. And the scripture says, a woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. And when you, when you look into this word maintain, basically it means to control. You know, or to just keep her husband and just, you know, she's watching all his steps. She's, she's trying to, you know, see where he's at all the time. She's trying to really, she's focused on maintaining him when that is not her duty. Her duty is to be a help me. Her duty is to aid and, and forward his cause. 
you know, don't don't get me wrong. You're going to have instances where a woman, your woman, your wife is going to bring up something that you might need to work on. Or so, you know, it's not to say that a woman is not going to see things that need to be worked on, but it's not a woman's duty to maintain her husband. You know, checking, going all through his stuff and being all in his space. A man's center of attention is not going to be the one like that. It's going to be his duty. But a woman's center of attention is going to be towards her man in the household. It's not a 50-50, uh, it, when we like, we always talk about a balance. If you put something on a balance and, and you have a rock and a feather and the rock and the feather are sitting on the same level, that actually is out of balance. That actually is not equitable. So so uh, women, you know, if you're listening to this, you need to make sure to maintain the mindset of, if you're sitting there trying to maintain your husband all the time, you're just gonna get on his nerves and he, he's not gonna be happy coming home he's not going to be happy around you he's going to be uncomfortable around you and that's going to make him further distance himself from you okay verse 23 says a wicked woman abateth the courage maketh a heavy countenance and a wounded heart and that's what happens you know to a man a lot of the men in the truth right now are offended by women and so you hear it come out on the lessons you hear it in society in general and that's why a lot of these channels on youtube are so popular it's because the nature of a relationship between men and women has been thrown off course in this society so bad that people are looking for answers especially men okay so it says a wicked woman abateth the courage maketh an heavy countenance and wounded heart right so it abateth courage men feel like they have to tippy toe around they can't be in their full nature because they're afraid of the emotions of the woman. The woman that will not comfort her husband in distress make it weak hands and feeble knees. And we have to understand that emotionally and mentally, especially the men of the Lord, they're going through a lot of mental, spiritual distress. We are at war and the men of the Lord are at the front line. And, and a lot of people don't really understand the mindset that it takes in order to continue on in this pilgrimage. Well, if you do have a wife that's supposed to be by your side, She's supposed to be there to support and comfort and uplift her man through these things. But a lot of times, instead of doing that, the woman is really looking at what is she supposed to be getting out of the situation. And she's not recognizing that what you're getting is an opportunity of salvation by being connected to this person. And that's one of the lessons that uh, one of the brothers did that was so powerful, talking about the seal of the Lord. You know, where everybody wants to have this personal relationship with Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and they're not understanding that that relationship literally is going out by the prophets. That relationship is real, being reestablished. That that um, high priesthood has been given to the 144,000, and that mediation. The scriptures talk about Yahweh Shai being a mediator, and through Yahweh Shai and that ministry. The 144 are actually connecting the nation back to that mediator and mediation, which is establishing a relationship. So the men of the Lord are, are very, very important with um, having a personal relationship with Yahweh Shai. And, and to not understand that and reverence that is a problem. It's offensive to a lot of the men of the Lord, okay? And, you know, we don't expect everybody to understand this or, or get it, but to who, who has ears, let them hear. Okay, so I wanted to take that point of a woman wanting to maintain her husband or keep her husband, watch over her husband, and really talk about how that's a problem. You know, when we read um, in, in Genesis the third chapter in the 16th verse, it says, "Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee." And one of the great points that the brother brought out is when you go into kind of like the, the, the other versions of the Bible that can help break this down, right? To help get a mindset of this in Genesis 3 and 16. Here, when you go to this version of the script, it says, Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth. That's a promise, right? And you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And that's the state of dominion that the Most High wanted. You know, we have the, uh, the Most High, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, the men, the women, and the children. And that high order has to make sense. And just as Yahweh Shai is dealing with many, many men and, and, and has the mindset of the mind, uh, and has the power over the mindsets of, of, of men, it's the same way vetted out from the men to the women and from the women to the children. 
And so we have to understand that that oneness is talking about instruction. It's talking about uh, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That creates the oneness, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of fulfilling the will of the Heavenly Father between a man and a woman in a household. That's oneness, okay? We have to understand that, okay? A lot of times we read here in Proverbs 31st chapter, and women, uh, men as well, we read this, this scripture, and it's a description of a, a, a worthy woman. And this is really what women need to focus on more. You know, you should be more focused on the cares and the duties of the household more than maintaining your husband. I think that if women focused on their duty within the ministry as far as what you're supposed to do within the household that will leave less idle time to focus on where he at, what he doing, why he with the brothers, why he want to go here so much, why he don't want to be with me, why, you know, all of these, these strifes and questions that really are not edifying. We all have to focus on the main thing, okay? A man's mindset is not going to be necessarily on the house like that. And it's, and it's not his job to be. We read this uh, in 1 Corinthians 7. You know, 1 Corinthians 7, 29. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives you know, be as though they had none. And, you know, it's like the understanding of that is just swept under the rug. No, the, a, a man's duty as far as his legacy and mindset is not here. The, the, the ultimate purpose of a household is to, to build, generate legacy and comfort. And we're living in a society where we're not building, we're not focused on building a legacy here. We're focused on, on, on how about Shimei Osha and having a legacy in the kingdom. And so we have to take that mindset and know that we're not looking for a regular relationship in Babylon. You're not, if you're trying to have some type of regular relationship that the world has taught you, this is what it means to have love, and this is what it means to be married, and this is what marriage looks like in the world, and you're trying to compare that to what you have on this side, and it's frustrating you because you're not getting the time that you feel like you have. You're not, man is not paying enough attention to you. It's because you're not really filtering out your mindset in the prophecies and the scriptures, and you're not really focused on what is purposeful and needful right now. What is purposeful and needful is, yeah, you do have to calm down your emotions. Yeah, we, we just like, uh, we, like we talk about being sentinels for the Lord, like kind of being like androids and robots for the Lord and just doing what the Most High wants. Our, all of our, all of us, the men and the women and the children are dealing with desires and wants and cares and the things that we want in this life. We're all dealing with the struggle of that. But we put off those things to focus on the overall mission and to keep our mindset steady and stable. So we have to stay sober on that point. That a man of the Lord is going to have that a mindset of the time is short, though that they that have wives be as though they have none. Why? What does that mean? I'm not focused on as far as our relationship and building it up and not in this thing like that. No. Do we, do we have these relationships for comfort? Is there goodness and happiness within our relationships and our marriages? Absolutely. But the overarching concept and mindset has to be understood if we're going to cohabitate. That look, the centerpiece of our happiness is in the kingdom and these are the duties that fall therein. Okay? And so when we go here, and, and we go to Proverbs 31 and 10, it says, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that she so that he have uh, shall have no need of spoil. Okay? So he trusts in her in her decision making skills. In order for that, there needs to be consistent, good decision making skills. Alright? But if there's a whole bunch of arguing, strife, side cutting, backbiting, things doing in a, in a, in a, in a begrudging spirit, there's not going to be a safe, uh, any safety of trust. Verse 12 says, she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Meaning her intention is not self-willed. Her intention is to glorify and build through him. You glorify the most high by building through with your husband because that is the chief duty. Most I sees that, and it's not going to be counted on this side necessarily. Those are those are treasures, just like we're going out there and we're not receiving the respect and the admiration that we feel we should get for 
the duty of the ministry. We're waiting for the kingdom to justify us, for Yahweh to justify us. It's the same with the women. Focus on building your house and doing what you need to do and know that in due time, those things will come in the kingdom. Verse 13 says, she seeketh uh, wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like a merchant ship and bringing her her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field and buyeth it, and with the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. She stretcheth out her hands to the poor, yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. Right? And so the women have work to do. You're not just, you know, the whole the idea of a woman is supposed to be taken care of, and a man goes out and provides, and she just sits in the house and, and kind of cleans a little bit and, 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 and waits to please her husband with sex. No, that's not the mindset of a if, if the woman's duty to grind and to build and to be focused on diligently toiling as well within the household, and that should be her focus, and that does bring delight to the husband. That is com comforting the husband to be in that mindset, okay? Just as we are doing the same thing with Yahweh Shah. We're not, we're not afraid to go out in the cold for Yahweh Shah. We are the most high women. So the duties of the house, the ministers of the Lord are focused on the duties of the house of God. So we play out in a similar type fashion a wife to that, to Yahweh Shah. And we're all underneath his house. In, in like fashion, the women are to play that role out in their household with their husbands. But if you cannot see Yahweh Shah through your husband, that's going to be a problem. And it's going to cause strife. And it's going to cause... Um, uh, a lack of cohesion all right and so a lot of times these arguments go out because men are in the home we are in this flesh women are looking at you every single day they see your faults and they're so focused on your faults and what they want to correct and to maintain you they're not focused on the overarching characteristics that actually matter more <laughs> you know the fact that a man is torn, and the fact that the man is justified through Yahweh Shah, even though he does have mistakes. Let me make sure that I focus on my duties within this house. Right? Verse 22 says, Her man, uh, me, it says, She maketh herself covering of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. And this is one of the things that that, that happens when whenever we, we, we soak and we sit and we, and we focus on what we want and our self-will. Problems. Women have to... Uh, grow out of that if, you, if you're going to be in and around this thing because it is an issue it is an issue you know what i'm saying i'll make a point here too about women uh, men dealing with more than one woman listen the whole focus of, of of a marriage is to build a house and the whole enterprise of a house there is a business nature to it don't get me wrong there is a uh, a tender loving kindness you know uh, aspect to a marriage, but then there also is a business mindset to a marriage. Just as like we use the, the idea of men being underneath Yahweh Shah, you have the same way with women underneath the men. So this mindset has to carry forth, you know what I'm saying? And if it doesn't, hey, we understand as a men of the Lord, we're waiting on the kingdom and, and everybody ain't gonna get it. But, you know, we touch on these topics so that uh, a certain mindset is talked about and vetted out. You know what I mean? There is a place to go to get these lessons. In Titus 2 and 4, it says that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be to discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of the Most High be not blasphemed. Okay, so definitely if a woman is in the house and she's everywhere, she's a busybody, she's clamorous, she's talking a whole bunch of noise, that is going to keep a man of the Lord from really progressing honestly 
He's going to keep his mind on having to deal with the strife at the household. And the most high don't like that. You bring your whole house. A woman can bring danger from the heavenly father to a whole household by being disruptive, combative, clamorous, and self-will. Okay? But these are the characteristics that should be, you know, focused on being discreet, chast, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. And it plays out a lot of that with we, we transition a lot of these things that we read in Proverbs 31 to, you know, a modern day household. You know, of course, you're not going to have, you don't have lands and all this stuff. You're not going and trading. No, you're dealing with, hey, you have a job and you bring that money back to the house and you utilize that money to do what that household needs. Right now, women do have to work, and that is a, a, a aspect of life, and it's a part of the curses. Okay, the, and a part of the work is the management of the house. That's why you're doing it. You know what I'm saying? It's not because the man is less. It's not because you know you're not being taken care of. No, that's a part of you. Got to work on this side. Get over it. We all have to get over it and maintain what we're supposed to do in the spirit. All right. First Peter's one. Verse Peter 3 and 1, it says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, with, um, without the word, be won by the conversation of the wives, while they behold your chast conversations coupled with fear. That chast conversation is your manner, the way you are, the way you carry yourself. And that that godliness can invoke the, mo uh, the, the man's spirit. Okay? It says, verse 3, whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plating the hair, of plaiting the hair, wearing gold, and of putting on the apparel. And that don't mean you can't have that stuff, by the way. It, what the scripture is talking about is mindset. Your adorning is, we're not focused on your outward adorning. Most I want your inward adorning to be on point. Verse 4 says, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. And that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of the Most High, a great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in the Most High adorned themselves, being in subjection to their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Okay? So we have to we have to understand this, and then it, and it goes on into uh, verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So of course, the mindset of our Proverbs thirty one, doing all these things, you know, you're not gonna. If a man is just good for nothing, he he he, 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 he don't work. He just laying up on the couch. He, he don't preach. He ain't in the word. He's not producing any of the mindset of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh of course that's going to be an issue but if you have a man that's focused on that then you got to bring yourself down and humble yourself just as we humble ourselves before the Lord Yahweh Shah this is the mindset that, that we all have to uh, maintain is we have a duty on this side and to focus on your duty focus on what you're supposed to be doing rather than trying to control things and, and, and please what we understand is our flesh or our emotionality a lot of times we talk about pleasing the flesh. And a lot of times that, just, that comes with emotional desires. That's pleasing our flesh. Instead of focusing on the overarching kingdom and our duties to get us there. We do have to kill those emotions a lot. We have to mortify our members of what we want. And really focus on what the Yahweh Shah wants, okay? And so this whole lesson that I'm doing is to is hopefully to help men and women recenter. Men, focusing on your duties with your Abashim Yahushua, doing what you need to do. And women, likewise, focusing on your duties, bringing comfort to the household, not strife, arguing, and bitter contention because of something that you personally want when it really is not ultimately super relevant to the mindset that a man is supposed to be in. A lot of times, when we hear issues that a brother having from the household, women want the attention to be diverted from they want to a woman wants to know how high she is on the pecking order so to speak she wants to know am i high on your on your priority that like she wants to be reminded of that and that's not the mindset that a man is supposed to be in right now is constantly reminding you where you are 
you know, right now on his pecking order or priority list. No. As, as a matter of fact, the scripture says those that have wives be as though they had none. So that's going to actually drop you in the front as far as the forefront in his mind. And that doesn't mean he don't love you. I mean, he don't care for you. Actually, it means the opposite. Actually, he, it, it, there's a fight for the kingdom that the man is focused on. Or there's a fight for a state of mind that a man is, uh, wants to stay in. And sometimes that means a man wants to be alone. Sometimes a man wants to get away. Sometimes he wants to just be with the brothers. Sometimes, you know, that's the way it is. What did you think was going on with the disciples and the apostles when they were leaving the household not for, for a day? You still got women mad if you don't come home at a certain time of night because they want to maintain you so bad instead of focusing on the duties of the house. And the reason why they feel that way is because of what they've been taught in this world that a man is supposed to be doing and how he's supposed to be moving instead of focusing on what the scriptures and what's going on in the scriptures. Okay? And focusing on the bigger picture. We have to keep the bigger picture at the forefront of our mind and let that filter out our decision making and where we stay at mentally. Okay? Because we all get in and get those things up. I know as men, we get hung up on how we feel, wanting our appreciation, and wanting our respect. And we allow the offense of not feeling like we get that to cause rage and anger. We become a lion in the house. We got to chill out. But it's the same way with the women. You know, they, want, they, want, they want that personal attention and comfort on this side and validation on this side to where they start getting all butthurt. Really. And it causes a whole bunch of strife and unnecessary, you know, distractions and things as far as the household need to be focused on for the women. And, and as long as you're doing that, things tend to iron themselves out. So a little willing levels that are fine. I know brothers are going to add to this on the comment boards, um, you know, for scriptures and, and other things of that nature. This is not a, a lesson for a whole bunch of complaining and fighting and stuff like that. And uh, but but it is a lesson to. Basically, you know, hey, we're coming into the last stretch of things. So, you know, for the women who really are trying to run through the tape and make it to the other side of this thing, get your mind right. Get your mind right on, on what the men of the Lord are really focused on right now. Get your mind right on, you know, your duty and your role. All right? Focus. Keep the main thing the main thing. It's what we all have to do. And Lord willing, we get the hell up out of here, man. The whole point of this is to make it to the kingdom because the ultimate answer for all the problems that we have that's going on with our, how we feel and what we want, the ultimate answer is to, to escape this place and to be caught up with Yahweh Shai. And, and, and get out of this place to and find a place, a place of peace. Lord willing, that was edifying, man. I uh, hope, uh, 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 hope so. Please place your, your comments and your scriptures below. Kohalo Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shabba Shem Dash. Double honors once again to the apostles and elder Brett Millstone. Much peace, love, and salutations to you. I came out there pushing the words and see the truth. Shalom.